Welcome to this uh, mini tutorial entitled Analog Building Blocks of DC-DC Converters. My name is Bernard Wicht and I'm a professor at the University of Hanover in Germany. My research interests are in uh, power management IC design. I am a member of the technical program committee of the International Solid State Circuits Conference, ISSCC, and I'm also a member of the Solid State Circuits Society. This year, I was asked to uh, give a tutorial at ISSCC 2020, uh, and this presentation is a reduced version of that tutorial. I would also like to highlight that there are many more of these uh, mini tutorials available and uh, this mini tutorial is, a dedica is dedicated to analog building blocks of DC-DC converters. So uh, DC-DC conversion is the uh, key element of the growing field of power management. We see a variety of energy sources with voltages that range from a few millivolts in case of uh, energy harvesting towards uh, quite high voltages in the uh, range of up to 100 volts, for instance, the 48 volts in automotive or in the field of IT servers. And now the DC-DC converters convert these voltages uh, into IC level voltages which have uh, gone down over the last couple of years and uh, reach levels down to one volt. The um, key care abouts are efficiency, so we want to have a good power efficiency, but at the same time we also want to have a small size, small volume, small footprint. We also want to be immune against the noise, uh, we want to fulfill EMC requirements and so on. And in the end we want to be cost uh, effective. Um, so by far the key uh, fundamental principle is pulse width modulation. Um, if you look at this uh, little uh, schematic here, so what do we do? We have uh, a power stage which consists of these two transistors and by turning them on and off we generate a uh, pulsing waveform here at the switching node and this is connected to a passive configuration of L and C, inductor and capacitor. And this LC stage has two purposes. The first one is uh, energy storing. So if you disconnect the whole DC-DC converter from the energy source, then we want to make sure that the current continues to flow. The second purpose is filtering. So L and C forms a, a low pass filter and that generates the average of this uh, pulsing waveform and uh, provides uh, the output voltage V out. So by changing the pulse width we can adjust the output voltage level. Of course there is still a little bit of ripple and uh, we have to deal with uh, parasitics and so on but is it this, this whole concept is very power efficient. If you look at a, a typical implementation, as we see here in the lower left, the uh, IC itself is quite small, while the inductor is still dominating the size. State-of-the-art switching frequencies are in the range of 1 MHz, and now the idea is to increase the switching frequency, and by doing so, our uh, storing time goes down and the size of the passive components shrinks. And we eventually reach a so small size that we can either co-integrate these passives in one package or we even can implement them on the same die together with all the electronics. So in order to form a control loop, we have the power stage in between the input and the output and then we use a um, error amplifier that uh, has a certain frequency behavior to uh, keep the whole loop stable under all conditions. That's why this uh, whole thing is called compensator and uh, it also indicates all the blocks that are interesting uh, to build a DC-DC converter. So we have a power stage with switch, gate driver, level shifter 
And we also have uh, control loop components that include the error amplifier. We also uh, will use a sawtooth generator and so on. There's of course, uh, since we have some power dissipation, some protection necessary, which includes over temperature, over voltage and current, as well as, as monitoring functions like current sensing. In order to design these blocks, uh, we need to use a suitable technology and this is uh, supported by various technology options, which includes uh, various uh, high voltage, low voltage transistor types, uh, as well as various isolation capabilities, buried layer trench isolation. And there are also components available like integrated Zener diodes, Schottky diodes, and some kind of non-volatile memory. Let's look at the power transistors uh, themselves. Uh, if the power level is uh, larger, then we want to use a discrete uh, power transistor. And there's a variety of uh, devices available. Um, it's interesting to implement the power stage together with all the analog and digital blocks on one IC as we see here on the right hand side. And that allows us to get uh, low on resistances down to 100 milliohm on chip together with a current in a few amps range. And in addition, these uh, power switches support voltage levels up to 100 volts. So that can be all integrated together. The power stage that we can form out of these power transistors can be found in uh, switch mode DC-DC converters in these four configurations. Uh, the first one here on the left is a low side uh, configuration where the uh, power transistor is located at the low side and then the load itself connects to the battery voltage. The opposite is the high side switch and if we both combine together then we form a half bridge. Two half bridge configurations give a full bridge, sometimes also referred to as an H bridge. So um, we've seen that these uh, transistors can be off chip or on chip. And in particular, if the um, voltages go up and also the power levels go up, we may use N type transistors as they allow it to implement lower on resistances and um, uh, require lower layout area. So the uh, if we take the power stage and form a control loop, the uh, fundamental concept is control concept that is shown here on this slide is voltage mode control. So we take the power stage and uh, we uh, feed back the output voltage into an error amplifier. And now at the beginning of each cycle, we turn on a uh, ramp, a sawtooth generator at the same time, we turn on the high side switch to bring uh, the energy into the system. And now the ramp voltage goes up until we cross the error amplifier output voltage. And at, it, at that time, the high side transistor gets turned off. So in the second half of the switching period, now this diode acts as a freewheeling diode and takes the current uh, ensures that the current continues to flow in the inductor. So um, what, we, uh, what we can now um, investigate is the control behavior in case of, uh, let's assume that the current, the load current increases, then our output voltage will go down a little bit and due to the inverting behavior of the error amplifier, our VC voltage will go up and that causes a uh, turn uh, a crossover at a later point, so which relates to a longer on time of our high side transistor. And so we bring more energy into the system, which uh, counteracts the increased uh, load current. So that shows that our loop is stable. And it also indicates that we need a lot of interesting um, analog building blocks um, as listed here. But we also need to look at system level, uh, at the uh, control loop, stability, transfer behavior. We need some sensing blocks, uh, diagnostics, uh, protection, and even features in some DC-DC converters like soft start. 
On system level, I would like to take a look at uh, floor planning. So uh, now we have a analog digital domain and in addition a power domain and we don't want to intermix those uh, areas on the die. This is mainly because the high voltage isolation is ensured by spacing. So we don't want to have a scattered uh, floor plan to be area efficient. Uh, likewise, we want to do all the wiring in groups. We want to uh, keep the noisy lines uh, separated from sensitive analog lines and supply lines. In order to get all the high current across the die, we um, can benefit from thick copper uh, on top of the die. And uh, some more aspects include mechanical stress, so we don't want to place sensitive blocks like the analog uh, uh, reference blocks, band gap references uh, at the edge of the die because of mechanical stress. Since we have some power dissipation, we uh, may perform some thermal analysis, uh, either some simple hand calculations or even more uh, detailed thermal simulations in order to identify our hotspots. So on, on the die, depending on the use case. So that brings me uh, to the end of this uh, mini tutorial. Of course, there will be many more aspects in the full length tutorial. Um, basically, we have seen that there is uh, a variety of uh, energy sources related to uh, different voltage levels and our DC-DC conversion uh, generates a suitable voltage at IC level. Uh, we have looked at various blocks, uh, power stage blocks, as well as analog uh, uh, control loop components and a little bit into system design. I would also like to mention that there are many more uh, tutorials available on the Society's YouTube channel and uh, this is continuously increasing. There's also many more full-length ISSCC tutorials available and uh, if you are not already a member of the Solid State Circuit Society, I highly recommend you to um, join as there are many more benefits. So this ends this uh, tutorial. Uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions and uh, contact me anytime.